Measuring, of course, is one of the first steps. In this tree, about one foot up from the ground line is 96 inches in circumference. So at a six inch spacing, which is the normal spacing for all our pesticide products, then the 96 inches divided by the six inch spacing will mean there's 16 microinjection units required to treat this tree. As we drill our first injection hole, we're going to be looking for a particular location that is going to be between these bark plates, preferably in the fissures between the bark plates, because after all, cosmetically, we're concerned about when this injection hole repairs itself. Uh, drilling through the plate itself will always leave some type of hole there after your drill bit is removed until that bark plate is eventually uh, pushed out and sloughed off. If you drill in the fissure, the hole will repair itself and, and quickly, within weeks, uh, and will be uh, very difficult to locate in the future. So for cosmetic purposes, try to drill between the plates, if at all possible, uh, and you won't be able to see where you've drilled. So we're going to start by drilling downwardly at a 45 degree angle. And when we drill down, I could feel the drill bit torque down. Then we're in the outer wood. Only go a quarter to three-eighths of an inch in. Pull your drilling bit out, and that's the perfect depth for a hole. The deeper you drill beyond that quarter to three-eighths of an inch hole in the xylem, actually the more difficult it is for the fluid to circulate because you're getting into older, less functional wood tissue. So stay within the first quarter to three-eighths of an inch once you feel that drill bit torque down and you'll be in the outer wood which is the youngest wood and that tissue is most uh, active in the conductance of fluids from the roots up to the canopy. Now that your hole is drilled you'll take uh, one of these hard nylon tips from your tip bag and place it in the end of the conical section of the injection unit. You'll notice that the forward tip has three vertical slits in it to provide additional avenues for the fluid to uh, flow into the hole once the septum is broken. So you'll take this unit and install it in the hole that you drilled, pushing it in snugly. Once the unit is in snug, it is self-supporting. You'll need the PVC one-inch cap that we'll place over the back of the unit for a striking surface and take a rubber mallet and tap it. And what you're doing is simply tapping until the conical shaped neck now is fully up against the back of the tip itself. The septum is already ruptured, the liquid is now moved and you can see that it has moved out of the conical shaped piece down into the neck of the unit. So the final step then is to pressurize the unit and you'll grasp it uh, firmly underneath on both sides and with your thumbs press downwardly until you hear a click. That's the tabs on the inside of the plunger grabbing against uh, uh, tabs on the conical piece and holding that plunger in place giving you approximately 10 pounds of air pressure above and behind the fluid. And so now you have fluid moving into the tree both by gravity and by air pressure. Now these units have been correctly installed in the tree, they've been pressurized, so the fluid in the tree now is leaving both by gravity and by positive air pressure above and behind the fluid. By limiting the depth of our hole to one quarter or three eighths of an inch into the outer xylem, we're now delivering this into the outer ring or rings depending upon your species and age uh, uh, and site quality that your tree is located on. The material then is being taken up by capillary action in the water flow from the roots up through the trunk, ultimately up into the canopy. After these units have drained, they simply can be removed 
and the process is quite easy. We'll make sure that you have your collection bag handy. You'll approach a unit and twist it, rotate it slightly left and right and pull outwardly as you're rotating. It's highly unlikely that the tip will ever separate from the conical section and remain in the tree. If so, you can remove this with a pair of needle nose pliers quite simply. But for the most part, if you'll just break that initial tension, rotating it left and right as you pull outwardly, the unit will come out with the contents completely drained. Keep in mind that there may be some air pressure still in here if the fluid is not drained completely, so you must be careful to always wear your personal protective equipment and stand behind the units, making sure you're having your gloves on. Now that the empty microinjection units have been collected and placed in the black plastic collection bag, you can uh, seal them off. And then uh, prior to disposal, depending upon your local situations, uh, you would consult uh, the carton label for uh, further advice about disposal. If your locality permits this material to enter the solid waste stream, you can handle it that way. If there's uh, uh, any other uh, restrictions, then you need to contact your local waste disposal personnel for your area to determine how units should be disposed of. And lastly, these injection holes are wounds. They must repair themselves in order to uh, restore vascular flow in the areas that were uh, treated. You do not place any farm material in there uh, such as steel wool, uh, caulking, uh, spray foam. Uh, there is no farm material you can place in these holes that will assist their healing. The holes will repair themselves uh, just as wounds and trees have been repaired for thousands of years. Anything you place in that hole will just trap moisture and will serve to favor uh, microbial decay or insect infestations. So simply withdraw your units, put them in a collection bag, and safely dispose of them according to your local regulation. Well, I hope you had the opportunity to see how simple this whole process is. From beginning to end, you, the operator, and installer are protected. There's been uh, no release of, of chemicals into the environment. The units have been withdrawn from the tree, placed in the disposal bag, and are now scheduled for proper disposal. So. Any further information, please contact our website, www.treetech.net, and we look forward to hearing from you for more Tree Tech tips.